for God. Save me by your name, by your power. Defend my cause. O God, hear my prayer. Give ear to the words of my mouth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge your sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and you, to you my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord of God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared pitching helps for us in our weakness, grant, we pray, that we may receive their healing effects with joy and reflect them in a holy way of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked said amongst themselves, thinking not aright, let us be set the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for the transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. He professes to have knowledge of God, and styles himself a child of the Lord. To us he is the censure of our thoughts. Merely to see him is a hardship for us, because his life is not like that of others, and different are his ways. He judges us debased. He holds aloof from our paths as from things impure. He calls blessed the destiny of the just, and boasts that God is his Father. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, he will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put him to the test, that we might have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own works, God will take care of him. These were their thoughts, but they erred, for the wickedness blinded them, and they knew not the hidden counsels of God, neither did they count on a recompense of holiness nor discern the innocent soul's reward. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The, the Lord, Lord is close, close to the brokenhearted. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He watches over all his bones. Not one of them shall be broken. 
The Lord redeems the lives of his servants. No one incurs guilt who takes refuge in him. The, the Lord, Lord is close, close to the broken heart. Heart. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that pours forth from the mouth of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with and your spirit. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus moved about within Galilee, did not wish to travel to Judea because the Jews were trying to kill him. But the Jewish feast of tabernacles was near. And when his brothers had gone up to the feast, he himself also went up, not openly, but as it were, in secret. Some of the inhabitants of Jerusalem said, Is he not the one they are trying to kill? And look, he is speaking openly and they say nothing to him. Could the authorities have realized that he is the Christ? But we know where he comes from. When the Christ comes, no one would know where he is from. So Jesus cried out in the temple area as he was teaching and said, You know me, and I also know where I am from. Where are you from? We have been asked that question often. We usually respond with the names of the city, state or country where we were born, grew up or have lived for a long time. And that place has become part of our identity. The way we talk, the food we eat, the sports team we root for are all factors pointing to our identity. Now, in today's Gospel invites us to contemplate the confusion that arose over the identity and mission of Jesus Christ. You know, at the time of the Feast of the Tabernacle, Jesus goes to Jerusalem privately, unknown to others, because he knew there were people plotting to kill him. However, in Jerusalem, he goes to the temple area and begins to teach openly to the amazement of the people. They could not understand how Jesus would preach and teach boldly and openly while the religious leaders there did not accept his identity as the Messiah and were plotting to kill him. Because they all knew, they say, where Christ came from and when Christ comes, no one will know where he is from. He does not fit the description of the Messiah they were taught. But Jesus cuts through the confusion saying that it is true that they know the place where he is from, but his roots went much deeper than Nazareth. They, were, they went deeper than even his family ties. Jesus was rooted in his identity as the Son of God. He had come from the Father, he says, who sent me, who sent him. And that was the focal point around which everything else in his life, all his thoughts, words, or deeds revolved. And they did not know who sent him and the mission he gave him. And no one the Gospel says no one laid a hand on him because the hour had not come to accomplish his mission. When we reflect on this, let us remember we too were born to a specific family in a specific time and place and this influences who we are today. But our deepest identity truly comes from God our Father. 
He created us. And by virtue of our baptism, we have become His sons or daughters. Like Jesus, that should be the focal point around which everything else in our life revolves. Being deeply grounded in our identity as God's son or daughter will change us tremendously. It will affect what we choose to do with our time and energy and uh, it will move us to pray and celebrate the sacraments. It will influence the way we relate to people and love and care for them and the way in which we speak to them. It will give our lives purpose and meaning because like Jesus, we all have also been sent to proclaim the good news of God's merciful love. It is indeed a great honor to have our identity as a son or daughter of God. Living that identity always should be our priority beyond anything else, wherever we are and whatever we do.
through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our shortest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you for our faithful and merciful God this sacrificial victory to reconcile us to you to the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, from those who unite yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who feeds every division. <clears throat> and be pleased to keep all this in communion of mind and heart, together with the country of our Paul, for this our bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, and the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, to the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, most blessed of Joseph of Spouse, to the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with the deceased brothers and sisters, whom we command and we now we command your mercy. Then free at last from the wound of corruption, and may it fully be the new creation, which has sinned to you the gladness of thanksgiving of Christ, who is our all the time. To him and with him and in him, O Lord Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Before the Lamb of God, before Him, who takes away the sins of the world, let the Lord fall to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
love and forgiveness of our sins in accord with the riches of his grace. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Grant we pray, O Lord, that we, as we pass from old to new, so with former ways left behind, we may be renewed in holiness of mind. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Before the final uh, blessing, I have an announcement for all of you. Pope the Holy Father, Pope Francis, has called all Catholics in the world to join him in prayer today at 1 p.m. Uh, Roman time, 6 p.m. Uh, this program has four parts, reading from the scriptures, prayer of supplication, adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, and the paper blessing, or be, or be, it, or be to the city and the world. This blessing is given only twice a year by the Pope, uh, usually at Christmas and Easter. But today, this, giving that blessing, the special intention for this time, we are all facing this crisis of coronavirus. So with the possibility of gaining plenary indulgence for those who listen to it live through various means of communication, you can listen to it uh, the Vatican website, vaticannews.va or UWPN or any other means. Please make it a point, join with Pope Francis today at 1 p.m. for this prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your head for God's blessing. Look upon your servants, O Lord, and your goodness. Protect with heavenly assistance those who trust in your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty God bless you all. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord for your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Lord Jesus, our divine physician, we ask you to guard and protect us from the coronavirus and all serious illness. For all that have died from it, have mercy. For those that are ill now, bring healing. For those searching for a remedy, enlighten them. 
for medical caregivers, helping the sick, strengthen and shield them, for those working to contain the spread, grant them success, but for those afraid, grant them peace. May your precious blood be our defense and salvation. By your grace, may you turn the evil of disease into moments of consolation and hope. May you always fear the contagion of sin more than any illness. May you find ourselves to your infinite mercy. 